Today, we're testing more games on the new iPad Pro under the Apple M1 chip. Our first game is Wonderbox the Adventure Maker, which is a create your own adventure type of game. You can share your own creations with other people and play them with up to four players. So this game is currently getting about 40 to 60 FPS. When you are engaging in combat, the frame rate can drop all the way down into the uh, 40s. And then when you are just walking around the, the environments, it's about 60 FPS. That being said, this is at the performance mode known as high quality, which will output, as it says, the highest quality graphics that are possible on your device. To be honest, it's not very noticeable the frame rate drops, mainly because of the game's perspective being quite high. Here is a comparison between the performance modes, battery saving and high quality. Battery saving will cap the frame rate to 30 and it will lower the graphics quality a little bit. It's also worth noting that Wonderbox has full keyboard support and it's supposed to have full mouse support. However, mouse support is currently broken. I hope that the developer looks into this because this game with mouse support would be awesome. Okay, here we have Thronebreaker, one of the best RPGs on iPad right now. I recently noticed that Thronebreaker has uh, custom graphic options. I don't know if this was available at launch. It may have been added later. We are playing at the graphics quality of high, and we've also turned off V-Sync and anti-aliasing is switched on. I tried to turn off V-Sync to see if the frame rate would get above 30, but it doesn't. I also tested the game at a medium preset, and the frame rate is still exactly the same. I'm hoping that in the future the developer can add an option to enable 60 FPS. Alrighty, here we have Shadowgun War Games, which is kind of the sequel to Shadowgun Legends. It has more of an Overwatch type gameplay mixed with Team Fortress 2. It's actually awesome. Sadly though, it is, it's currently on its last season and apparently it's not going to be updated, which is kind of depressing because it's one of the best multiplayer FPS games on the App Store. This game can actually get up to 120 FPS, however to do that you are going to have to play at a lower graphics quality. For example, here we are running the game at ultra high settings, and as you can see it doesn't always get 60 FPS, it actually drops quite considerably at times. This is kind of the same story for the previous iPad Pro as well, so the M1 chip uh, is not benefiting that much. That being said, the game has not really been optimized for this chip, and well, to be honest, most games haven't yet, apart from Definity Original Sin 2. Here I am on medium settings, and as you can see, the difference between ultra, high, and medium is quite noticeable. Now my capture card can only output up to 60 FPS, so I am unable to test games at 120 FPS. Maybe that's something that I'll look at uh, in, in the future. Anyways, at uh, medium settings, the game should be getting well over 60 FPS at all times. Here we have Samurai Jack Battle Through Time from Apple Arcade. Now, the downside of playing this game on mobile devices is that you can't change the graphics quality. You, you can only play at the default settings that the developer wants you to play at. However, recently, the developer has seemingly updated the graphics quality on this device, or on uh, many devices, the graphics quality has been updated and it looks so, so much better. That being said, the frame rate is still not great, and I kind of wish that they worked more on the frame rate performance than the graphics quality, because it's still quite noticeable when you get these big uh, frame rate drops, it's quite noticeable because of the game's third person perspective. It's the same story with Wonderbox, when you engage in combat the frame rate will drop quite considerably and then when you are just, you know, running around the environments it will be about 60 FPS. I hope the developer adds some options so that we can manually change the settings and get a higher frame rate. 
Stardew Valley is one of the most downloaded games on the App Store. It's such an addicting game and I absolutely love it. So as you can see, the iPad Pro version here has no issues. It's always getting 60 FPS, and in fact, who knows, maybe it's getting you know 120 FPS, but I just can't test that because of my capture card it doesn't output above 60 Hertz. Uh, so if you want to play this game, it works great, but then again, Stardew Valley works great on pretty much everything it runs on. So it's really no surprise how well it's doing here. God, this game is good. It's so addicting. You start playing it and you just can't put it down. I love it. The Gardens Between is a beautiful puzzle adventure game. I even met the devs who worked on this game and they are so passionate about this game and updating it for the platforms that it's supported on. So unfortunately right now the Gardens Between is capped at 30 FPS on this iPad Pro which is kind of just a bug because it should be getting 60 FPS as it does on the latest uh, iPhone and iPads. So the developer is aware of this, I told them, and they are working on an update to fix this and yes I'm really excited for that. The Gardens Between was also one of the first games on iPad to get full keyboard support, which is awesome. I highly suggest that you use this game with a keyboard. It's great. A lot of you asked to see Life is Strange in my first episode, so here you are. Life is Strange on pretty much all iPhone and iPads is capped at 30 FPS and the graphics quality is considerably lower compared to the PC and console version, which is very unfortunate. This doesn't have to be the case anymore. Regardless, it's one of the best adventure games out there and its way of storytelling is really well done in terms of how you can rewind time and redo your choices. It was really smart. Here you can see I'm at the parking lot at the start of the game and I'm just walking around and it's getting, yeah, 30 FPS and it will, as you can see, it sometimes gets like 29, 28 FPS, but it's fairly consistent at staying at 30. It's just the frame, frame time is quite up and down and that is when you're going to notice that a game is kind of not, the, not very well optimized. Here is Mortal Kombat, which used to be called Mortal Kombat X, but now it's just called Mortal Kombat. And as you can see, it has really good performance. I noticed that the frame rate will drop when, uh, you know, characters use their special abilities and stuff like that. And that's pretty much it. You won't really notice it yourself uh, unless you are looking really closely, but it's just not that noticeable. Um, so give this game a go, it's a really good fighting game and it's free, so you're not, not going to lose anything. It doesn't have control support, which is disappointing, it's all based around touchscreen controls, but it's it has been implemented really well. Sociable Soccer on Apple Arcade has recently had a massive update. It's now been updated to the 2021 edition, with some significant updates. The most important update is a totally new player models in-game that look significantly better than the prior version of the game. I think it still has a little bit of a way to go in terms of the animations and the character designs, but it's so much closer to what their goals are and I'm really proud of the developer. This is one of the few games on Apple Arcade that also has an in-game FPS counter, so I didn't use my frame rate analysis tool for this game. And as you can see, it's pretty much always getting 120 FPS. Awesome! Titan Quest has been on the App Store for quite a while, but there have been a few different versions of the game. This is the Legendary Edition, which came out uh, earlier this year by Handy Games. It is a considerable upgrade in terms of graphics, performance and it contains all the DLC. It's having some mixed performance right now. As you can see right here I'm playing it at the highest settings. I notice that when you are walking through condensed cities or towns or whatnot the frame rate will drop into the low 40s. And the, the weird thing is that I did a benchmark comparing it to medium settings and the performance is pretty much exactly the same as you can see right now, which is really weird. Even if you went lower than that, it's still the same. 
It's also worth noting that Titan Quest has partial keyboard support, but it's only for shortcuts, so you know, changing your weapons and spells and whatnot. It's cool that it's there. Battle Prime is a first person shooter that, in my opinion, looks so much better than Call of Duty Mobile. Anyways, the game offers three graphics modes, favor quality, favor performance, and energy saving. For this video, I'm showing favor quality right here, and as you can see, it gets about 30 to 60 FPS. If you want a consistent 60 FPS, you will have to play at favor performance. The weird thing though is that this version of Battle Prime on the new iPad Pro is missing the high performance mode which will get 120 FPS. If you go onto the 2020 iPad Pro, you can enable this, so I don't know why that's missing. Layers of Fear is currently the best first person horror game that you can get on the App Store. So oh, this game is capped at 30 FPS, but despite that, it isn't doing the best. In this game, you're pretty much just walking around all the time. However, doing the most basic things like opening a door or grabbing a key, the frame rate will drop and it's very noticeable. However, this is, is not just uh, an iPad Pro issue. This is an issue on iPhone and iPads, pretty much all of them. It is honestly, sadly, not a very well optimized game on uh, mobile, uh, which is unfortunate because on other platforms it works really well. Despite its uh, high-end looking graphics, it's not actually a very demanding game. Bright Memory Mobile is a first-person shooter with uh, like fantasy elements. This is actually a demo version of the full game, which will be coming out eventually. It's going for next-gen visuals and does it live up to that? Uh, not really. Uh, some people say it does, but I think the graphics are highly overrated. Right now on this M1 iPad Pro, the game has mixed performance. Its main issue is that it has some graphical bugs that you can probably see sometimes when you're shooting at enemies or during cutscenes. Anyways, here we are playing the game at a render resolution of 100%, and we've got refraction on and post-processing effects are on as well. And the game gets about 30 to 60 FPS. It's not very consistent. So what you want to do is you want to put down the render resolution to 70% and you want to turn refraction off and post processing off. The game doesn't look as good, but playing at 60 FPS is consistently for this type of game is really needed because it's very fast paced. So many of you wanted to see inside. I wanted to show this game in the first episode, but its performance was absolutely terrible. It wasn't even getting 30 FPS. It's a little bit better now, getting, well, typically over 30 FPS, but it's still not great. It's pretty much only getting, uh, its max FPS it can get is about 45. So I would hold off just a little bit before playing this game because I think this game really does benefit from 60 FPS. I know it's a bit slow paced, but all the different things you're doing in this game and exploring and all the bizarre encounters, for me, I just think that the high frame rate is really, it really propels the experience. Civilization VI, unfortunately, this game, I could not track the frame rate for. There are just a few games that my frame rate analysis tool doesn't work for, and this is one of them. What I do know is that this game should be getting about 30 FPS on any mobile device. The render resolution here is considerably lower. For example, it's honestly quite difficult to read some of the text because their resolution or quality or whatever you want to call it is a lot lower. The cool thing though about this game is that it does have keyboard support uh, and you can use it for shortcuts for different things that you're doing on the map. It's not full keyboard support, it's like partial, but it's cool that it has it. Asoluto Racing is a free racing game that is honestly one of the best of its class in terms of its somewhat realistic graphics. The main thing it's missing is a damage system, but uh, it also has really good performance and it has a lot of modes that you can jump into and they aren't you know, hidden behind a paywall and stuff like that. 
So the game is getting about 57 to 60 FPS. Sometimes it will drop into the 40s and then it will go straight up to, to 58. So what I'm playing here is at max settings and the resolution is 100% or 1080p. I don't know why the game calls it 1080p resolution because it's not really running at 1080p. If you want to get 60 FPS, what I would suggest is lowering the max quality down to something like high or medium, and the game still looks honestly just as good. Huntdown only recently arrived on iPhone and iPad and Apple TV. It is honestly one of the best 2D action platformers out there. It is so amazing and it even has keyboard and controller support so as you can see the game has no issues it's getting 60 fps always and that's really no surprise it's not a demanding game by any means but in a way it's still quite impressive as this game has a lot of on-screen effects going on and you can get a lot of enemies on screen at once and the uh, the fact that it's always 60 fps in my opinion is still quite impressive Forgotten Memories is a hidden horror adventure game on the App Store. It kind of plays a little bit like Resident Evil and Silent Hills. It recently had an upgrade with considerably better graphics and 60 FPS support. The iPad Pro version with the M1 chip is, uh, you don't want to play at max quality as you can see because the frame rate is not consistent and it will drop and it's, it's very, very noticeable. So what you want to do is you want to put the display resolution to 50% and you want to put a, a few of the post-processing effects, you want to turn them off, just a few of them, and then you will get a consistent 60 FPS. So I just did one benchmark for this and as you can see, comparing it to very high and high and medium settings which you can enable from the options menu it's quite hidden the game is always getting 30 fps so uh well you probably just want to always play it very high because that's when the game looks the best and the frame rate is going to be the same uh it's kind of weird that it's so consistent it's like exactly the same performance you might also find it interesting to know that the game has partial keyboard support but it's really broken and I would not suggest using it but I just thought it was weird that it's actually there. Odmar is a fluid 2D action game. So right now the game is getting anywhere between 30 up to about 45 FPS. The mobile port of this game actually isn't the best optimized on any platform and this is most noticeable through the frame time as it's kind of all over the place and the render resolution of this game is quite low too but despite that it's an excellent platformer and apart from its shortcomings i would still give it a go as it's just really well made so our last game is slay the spire which is a card battler and one of the best of its kind iPhone and iPad version of this game is capped at 30 FPS. Disappointing? Um, not really. Slay the Spire doesn't really benefit from a massively high frame rate because a lot of the elements in this game, in the scene or whatnot, are quite static and a high frame rate isn't really going to benefit from it that much. Those are 21 more games tested on iPad Pro. What do you think of the performance results? Are you impressed or disappointed? The cool thing is that Apple recently announced that in iPadOS 15, developers will have more access to RAM on the new iPad Pro. So at the moment, you can currently only use up to five gigabytes, I believe, but that's real. I'm really excited as we should now see some more high-end games come to iPad Pro. Anyway, leave a like to show your support and subscribe and turn on notifications to stay up to date with everything Apple gaming related. My name's Stewie and thanks for watching.